We have another two euro donation from Asterix saying, I like focuses. They are nice. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to make a small clarification towards the Colin McRae Rally 2.0 incentive. The actual uh, incentive will close at the end of the challenge percent run, which is also the start of the arcade percent run. So you still have about 40 minutes until the, the incentive closes. Yeah. With that being said, the Toyota Corolla has taken the lead again. And it's at, it now stands at 5 euros. It's still anybody's game. There's still plenty of time to donate. So if you want to see your game on, on Colin McRae Rally, this feel free to cool. donate now. I hope you guys are ready for our very next run with VPG13 doing Colin McRae Rally 2.0 at Challenge Percent. Good luck, VPG. Let's go. Okay. Am I ready? Am I ready? Sorry. <laughs> How are you ready? Yeah, yeah alrighty. Right. Just yo time. Okie doke. Right. Uh, I'll talk about run as we get into it, but basically we'll go on go sims, everybody else so far. Uh, okay, so three, two, one, go. Okay, so just to get a bit of explanation. So this is Call McRae Rally 2, uh, and this is for the PlayStation 1. Now, you may have seen this game before, or me play this game before, and that is because you would be right. So basically, with Call McRae Rally 2, I have run this in this event before. However, it's the main championship. Now the two categories I'm going to be doing today, the first of which is this one, Challenge Percent. This is basically a, should we say a bonus mode, or an extra mode that they put in the second game, that was never in the first game. And in the Challenge mode, it's basically you do head-to-head -head races against one other component. Uh, sorry, one other opponent. Not component. Um, and long story short, you have to do four rounds against the AI, and it's basically you just you've got to win against them. So we'll be doing four rounds of Japan, four rounds of Greece, four rounds of Sweden, four rounds of Kenya, and finally to finish it off, four rounds in the UK. Now, during this, for the most part, it's basically the same race that's done four times over. And for optimization's sake, in some of the, one of the stages, which ironically is the UK, We'll be using um, like a wall grinding trick, I think it would, you could call it. Basically, we'll be smashing off the walls to gain, keep our speed, and keep ourselves going. So, that is the first one done. Literally, Japan is very, very short. So, for the most part, you'll literally see me skipping through menus and things like that. Obviously, to make this run that little bit faster, we will be using uh, the fastest speed of the PS2. And also, another thing to mention is that this run is actually RNG based so rather than you just have one specific car or know when you're gonna get a select car you'll actually have a different car sometimes so the fastest car in the game is the Seat Cordoba I believe and the slowest one is the one we're currently driving the Toyota Corolla uh, which is ironic because this could get used to the RK percent but you can always change that anyway moving on so, like I said, it's kind of RNG based with what you get. So, you might end up getting the Toyota four times, or you might get the Subaru four times, or the Seat. Sometimes you can, like I said, you can get a car four times in a row, but for the most part, the game will give you a mixture of the cars. And also, you won't start on the same side all the time. You might get a rare occurrence where you will, but half the time you might start on the left hand side of the track, and the other, other times 
you'll start on the right hand side. Now the main significance of which side you start on, it doesn't really make a difference for most of the tracks in my honest opinion. But for Sweden it actually does make a difference because one side is supremely quicker than the other. And long story short, I think it on Sweden it's something like if you start on the right hand side, because you've got a turn to the right hand side first of all, it means that you can have, I think it's sort of, it's, it's a longer side because you have to go slower. Whereas if you start on the left side, you end up having a shorter route and you can take more speed around some of the corners. So it ends up making the stage a lot quicker. That's pretty much it. Um, the reason why I'm running this on the PlayStation 1 instead of the PC is because we've already had the PC version. I thought it's about time we have the PS1 version for a bit of love to show it some love. Granted, a lot of people would prefer the PC version because obviously it looks better, it plays better and whatnot, but I was like, I fancy a change, so yeah, we're going to play it on the PS1, because why not? Um, so as you can tell at the moment, we're not doing too bad on time, I think we're, I don't know, obviously because we're playing against all the opponents on easy, so we're going to walk them pretty easily. Um, like I said, the main, main part of the run that's all RNG based is just the cars and which side you start on. Um, yeah, six and a half seconds, fair to say we've completely whooped the AI's ass. Anyway, so, like I said, for the most part, it's just RNG based. Um, the arcade percent's kind of interesting in the regards to what the AI does. Because the only RNG you'll get from them is depending on how they drive. It's a bit odd. So you might get past the AI in the first corner, or you might not get past the AI till later on. That sort of thing. Um, so obviously you can see this is actually a pretty lucky snag that we managed to get the Seat Cordoba. Obviously the fastest option would be to get this four times in a row. But it's a very rare occurrence that you'll get it four times in a row. I think the most I've ever had it in one go was three times in one country. Which is pretty decent. Actually it's pretty good. I've never had it four times in a row but that's like the one ultra rare occurrence that I've yet to experience the pleasure of. Um, but for the most part, like I said, it is the fastest car. And you'll notice as well when I'm doing my driving, I am using the manual gears. Just because on a PS2, PS2 version, on a PS1, I tend to find that driving with manual gears, it's usually relatively quick no matter what in a rally game. If you use automatic, it's usually for beginners. But obviously then when you get used to it, start using manual, you'll find it's a lot faster. It's pretty much like that for any racing game, to be honest. There's some racing games where you're using automatic gears is better. But for the most part, manual gears is always quicker usually. In most cases anyway. But yeah, if anybody has any questions regarding this run, feel free to ask away. I'll happily answer those. Uh, most people that are in my chat will know that I play this game, run this game quite consistently. I have been running it lately because I've mainly just been busy. Um, so that's Japan done. And now we get to move on to... Greece, which as we all know, <laughs> Paul will get a seal approval and obviously in case nobody notices or nobody has noticed yet, I'm wearing a Greece shirt, so yeah, I don't know. It's like there's something about Greece today, isn't there? Anyway, so we're stuck with a Corolla, which is a bad choice, although I think to be perfectly honest, the two worst cars in this game are the Corolla and the Focus. No surprise. Um, although they were pretty good back when they actually participated in the World Rally Championship, funnily enough. But in this game, they're just crap. They're rubbish. It's, not, it's a fun fact as well about the some of the other cars that are in this game. So, in half of the game, you've got like bonus cars, such as the Peugeot 205, which is like a Group B monster, which is exceedingly quick. Uh, there's also other cars in there, Lancia Stratos, um, what's the other ones? Well, the Ford Sierra Cosworth, the Mini Cooper makes its own appearance in this game. And it is very slow because it's a Mini Cooper. Uh, the original Ford Escort, I believe. As well as the uh, alternate liveries, I believe, for the Ford and the Mitsubishi. And there's even, I'm glad they introduced this, but there's even the 1999 Focus in here as well. The actual one that Colin McRae drove himself. So it's a nice little, shall we say, nice little extra they've added in. Funnily enough, 
after this game, I believe we rarely saw the Toyota ever again in this game. So it was in the first game, it was in the second game, didn't appear in the third game, didn't appear in the fourth game, didn't appear in 2005. So this is the only time we're actually going to see the Corolla today. But yeah, um, regarding Greece and which side you start and which way is actually faster. Um, personally, I can't really say which one's faster. I believe if you start on the left side, which we've got now again, um, this is actually the better side to start on because you can take more speed near the end and you can also make the route to the end a bit shorter. But for the most part, it's not that bad, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I don't think there's anything else I can mention about the run. It's basically four rounds of each country. And the reason why I said there's actually different difficulty levels. So you can do this run on the medium or the hard difficulty. You won't encounter any difference other than the AI will be quicker. But for the most part, it's nothing to worry about at all, if I'm honest. Um, and also the number of rounds can be changed. So if I wanted to, to make like the ultimate quick round, shall we say, or to complete this run in god knows how fast i don't know how fast you can complete it basically you can set the challenge to one round so it's literally just you do one round per country you the reason why we left it at four was because four funnily enough is its default i believe and considering that's the maximum amount and it takes a considerable amount of time it makes sense so we're at the semi-final at the current moment and we're actually going to take on colin mccray in the subaru which is ironic um, I don't know who we're going to take on the final though. So the way challenge percent works, sorry, not challenge percent, the way each challenge works from the start to the finish, I've already mentioned obviously it's a head-to-head -head race, you do it four times, but basically it's broke down into you start with eight people, you then, and after each round is won, you then get cut down into the quarterfinals where there's four guys. You then get cut down again where there's two matches which are the semi-finals and then the one match which is the final and then if you win the final you win the challenge now from what i can remember somebody asking me or what was in the discussion when it came to doing this category was that if you lost at say the semi-final were you still allowed to count it as a win and the answer would obviously clearly be no because you've got to win the challenge for each country before you move on to the next one um, funnily enough we've actually had only out of all of the current runs that we've had for challenge percent the fastest one currently is not actually by myself funnily enough uh, it's by somebody called lucky or as he's known lucky 1297 i think it is and he's currently got the world record time which i believe is 32.56 or something that's that do we have time for a quick donation? Far away. Great. We have 11 euros from Pollister saying, who said hosts can donate? I say wish we hosts should go cray. Colin McRae. <laughs> Money goes to the Halo 3 incentive. Hey, get the Halo there. Very nice. I have, to admit, I have to agree with that statement as well. Who says host can't donate? Nobody. Nobody ever said that. Yeah, so um, one thing I could actually mention about Colin McRae in the, the series, I've done, like I I've previously done Colin McRae Rally 2 on the PC, and that was an any percent run. Uh, so that was completing the championship in the fastest time possible from start to finish. I've also done a Colin McRae Rally 2005 run on, in this marathon as well. And you get to see the second game once again in its glorious PS1 format, which looks terrible. And obviously the first one may happen, but we'll find out. Um, but regarding Colin McRae in whole, um, as a community, um, the Colin McRae community has... Oh, I think it was something like we, we talked about memes for Gone with Great Rally and you wouldn't think that you could come up with one for a racing game but oh boy we did introducing Colin McCrash Rally 2 
And um, I won't explain it, but it is on the Discord. So if you want to go and check it out, as I've selected the wrong country, Jesus Christ. Um, if you want to go and check it out, it is on our server. So feel free to go and check that out. Uh, it's also on my personal server as well. There we go. Sweden! It's like the right one this time. <laughs> hey! Um, but yeah, so, the, like I said, the reason why, the main reason for why this category is actually short, and it's not a question that a lot of people have asked, but the reason why this category is very short is because there's only four races, and for the most part, each race is like a minute and a half. And because then you're doing, for the first part, like, the first race that you do in Japan, um, that actually is like a minute and 15 seconds. Greece, as you saw, was about a minute and 18. Sweden, I think, is probably either the, not the long, well, it's kind of on a tide first for being the longest race that you can do. So there's actually two that you can do. There's Sweden and there is also Kenya, and which will be going up next, funnily enough. And that's where most of our time is spent with this run. The UK is about a minute and a half per lap, so it's not too bad. But like I said, for the most part, you'll notice that we're going to actually wreck these cars during the Sweden one. Just because we're doing something called wall grinding. Obviously, everybody knows what wall grinding is. But um, we've, uh, somebody, like I said, Lucky, the base, the guy who'd, um, who's currently got the record for this category at the moment, um, he found out that it's actually quicker to just grind the wall than it is to... Yeah, it's actually quicker to grind said wall than it is to actually drive around the corner. How that works, I still have no idea. But it's cool, Masters, so anything goes, I suppose. Um, but yeah, and also, this game was made in like 2000, so yeah, it's going to be broken. Not as broke as some games nowadays, but you know, still broke. And this is actually looking decent. What time are we going to get? 135 maybe? 136? That's not bad, actually. So what we're going to try and do is we'll probably try and aim, if we can start on the left hand side, we'll try and aim for like a 133, 134. If we can't aim for a 133, then a 100, 135 is ideal. Um, ideal, I want to try and get around the 35 minute mark, which is way underestimate. Um, after doing some practice the other day, I think I'm just going to rack up a total time of 35 minutes, which I was pretty impressed with. So hopefully we can get close to that. Obviously, not everyone can go successful, so if we do have a couple of crashes, that's fine. And it also shows how bad I am as a driver. But not as bad as Colin the Crash, you know. Anyway. Obviously, Colin McRae, in case, just to give a bit of a battle on Colin McRae, um, a lot of people will probably recognise the name. You probably would, even if, you're, if, even if you're not from Scotland, you recognise it. Um, but he was basically famously known for going flat out on every stage. And yeah, he was a bit of a nutcase, really, behind the wheel. Even Nicky Grist, his co driver, which is, is our co driver, the guy who you can hear telling directions to us at the moment, he actually got scared of him once. Some rally in the early 2000s or other. And he was like, Colin saw this massive jump to save some time. It was brilliant. It's like a funny story between Colin McRae and Nicky Grist. And um, Nicky Grist, obviously Colin can't, he's not allowed to, he's not, he can't tell it because obviously he's not around anymore. But Nicky told it and it was something on the lines of, they were doing a rally one year, this was when Colin was driving for the Ford team. And there was a massive dip in the stage and Colin decided to go, sack it, I'll, I'll put my foot down, I'll go flying. So anyway, he launches the car off the end at 120 mile an hour. And instead of going under the dip, like all the drivers were dipping and going in the dip, rather than doing that, he didn't do that. He went over the dip onto the other side and smashed the car's back end. He just, he's a, he were a nutcase. He's just like, well, I can save like two and a half seconds there, so. But yeah, he, he was an absolute nutcase behind the wheel. This is one of the reasons I crash a lot. It's, it's, one, one, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I idolize him. So, one of the things that I could safely say about myself, especially when speedrunning, is that I can go a bit ballistic behind the wheel. Not in real, well, kind of in real life. So, if you see me on the motorway, watch out. But, in a game anyway, a racing game speedrun, I'll tend to give it <laughs> my all. Um, nothing's probably been shown more so than the any percent novice category 
for this game, which, like I said, I've done on this marathon once before. And basically, I'd set a time of like 1.26.58. And um, lucky that one of the guys in the community is who was increasing his times at the point, uh, he'd, um, he probably doesn't appreciate, appreciate me bringing this up, but regardless. Um, he had set like a better time than me, which was about seven seconds faster. And it had come at like the worst possible time because he beat me on Christmas Day. So my Christmas Day went from like good to bad instantly because he beat me. So obviously I started de rusting and stuff like that. And then a couple of days later, just came out to the run, did like a 125.05, which was a lot faster. And funnily enough, even Lucky himself has agreed that it was a pretty damn good run. I can't, I, I don't know personally what my, I mean, I was too busy concentrating on the game, so to say, oh, I was, I don't know, I think you said it was like godlike driving, but I'm like, it wasn't. I was just concentrating <laughs> too hard. Yeah, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask. I probably have covered the whole thing, though. Even extra details I didn't need to cover. <laughs> I'm good at doing that, though. Talking about nonsense for ages. Oh, dear. So I think this is the last one, actually. The last race in Sweden. Which, thank God, because I hate Sweden. On this. I don't I hate actual Sweden. Don't worry. I just hate Sweden on the game, that's all. Sweden is like hell. Although the UK is worse, but that's because we've got Theresa May as the Prime Minister. Anyway, um, but yeah, for the, for, the, for the most part, anyway, regarding that, yeah, sorry, anyway, oh, you got it. anyway, regarding politics and all the rest of it, forgetting all that, yeah, um, Sweden on this game isn't very fun, if I'm honest, it's probably one of the most boring and most challenging rallies out of a lot. The next one coming to, I think, Italy would be the next one on the list. Uh, mainly because that's a tarmac rally full of you know, like tight turns and chicanes and stuff like that. It's just horrible. Thankfully, we won't see that in this run. Arcade Percent does have an Italian track, but thankfully, it's not that bad. Arcade Percent's actually going to be really fun because it's all dependent on what, guy, what car you guys pick. And I hope you don't pit this car, for the love of God. Please don't pit the Focus. Pit the Crawl. I'd actually have the Crawl over this car. That's how bad the Crawl is. Okay, though. Yes. So please donate for the Subaru. That's much better. Okay, Kenya. Nice and easy. So this one's mainly just straightforward. The only bit that's a bit difficult to pull off is going over... As I'll show in a, in a second. It's on the right hand side of the track, so I won't get to show it off just yet. But on this, there is two bridges. So the first one we're going to go over right now, which is over this river here. And there's another one on the opponent's side. So he's going to cross over on the right hand side in a minute. You might just have caught it there. That is a pain when you're trying to take that at 100 miles an hour. Because that's obviously, I'm, again, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can get as fast as we can. Hopefully, we should be able to. But. That bridge has caused so many headaches for myself, for Lucky, and a couple of other guys in the CMR community. Um, it's just been unbelievable at how like, RNG this is. This is like, I think, I'd say out of all the categories for any of the CMRs, the ones that I'm running today, I'd say, are probably the most competitive. So, like, CMR 2 is any percent leaderboard. Has got, I think, nine people that have run it, that have actually done the run. But despite arcade percent only having I think me and Lucky that's done a run, challenge percent's had I believe four people. But it's mainly me versus Lucky. That's what's drawing like all the attention for the two categories. He's actually said to me a little recently, he's just come up to me and said, I reckon you could go faster and I'm like, no. Cause he's actually really good at this, funnily enough. He praised me for one of my runs that I did once, but he's actually the best at this category. So, like I said, for the most part, I am using, as said before at the start, that I am using manual gears just because it's the easiest to use. I think when it comes to arcade percent, I'll also use manual gears, because why not? So that is the first round of Kenya done. We've got another three rounds. It's only a, nearly two minutes long.
<laughs> it's a shame it's not Africa, because then we could have Toto playing, but then I think you could get away with that, actually. Just rename Kenya to Africa. On this game, on this game, you could not. Oh, I don't mean real life. No, 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 not in real life. Obviously, don't want to be too controversial. Just for the game, just to be on the safe side, just to keep things rated PG. That just this game. That's all I mean. No, but please don't get the wrong idea. Please don't ban me from everywhere. Um, it sounds like that's what I'm saying, doesn't it? No, there's no wall that's been built. <laughs> Thou shall not invite Viper to another event. That'll be the next one. Go on. What, what's the Fifth Amendment? Come on. That's why I'm just saying, like, I don't want to be too controversial. A bit late now, I've already dug that hole. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, my problem is, and I'll admit this, I don't even care, I can admit, I'll admit this on stream, is that I tend to dig a hole way before anybody's even had a chance to put cement in it. Like, I've just dug the hole and then gone, right, now you can throw the cement on top. By the time I've been filled in, literally, it's uh, a case of, yeah, you've already done your damage. Maybe you shouldn't have said that. It's like, oops. Yeah. Funnily enough, I haven't doxed myself yet. And I'm still crapping on the day I might get swatted by accident. I don't want to get swatted. Please don't swat me. Please don't swat me. How would I swat myself? Send the, send the note. Just ri ring up Manchester Police Station. Hello, I've got a bomb hidden under my bed. Alright, we'll come raid your house then. I can imagine the confused look from the police officer, but like, what's a SWAT? Well, you're a SWAT, you're in the police office, the police force, but anyway. You're not in the police force, though, are you? You can't be part of the SWAT force. Wait, you used to be part of the police force? Did you just say you were part of the police force? Oh, right, thank God. <laughs> oh no. Don't keep me on edge, man. Oh no. Hello, Zoton. Nice that you drop by. I can tell, I know what he's gonna be here for. He'll, do, he'll be around for me driving a parallel lines run later because he wants to see me fail so bad at that game. It's true, I honestly just ask him. He's probably like, I can't wait to see you actually do a decent time for this game. It might not be, but. I don't know. I know, I don't have any. Can you tell? <laughs> and it's also the reason I don't have a girlfriend, but anyway. <laughs> oh, that feels bad. Speaking of mental health, we have a quick donation. Do we have time for one? Go for it, yeah. Okay, we have a three euro donation from Asterix saying, Someone please think of the focus! What would happen if we didn't get a focus? Please let's get the focus and focus on the focus in the run. <laughs> that, that, that took me a while to, un to unpack that, but after a refresh, yes, the Ford Focus is in the lead by oh, no. 50 cents. Come on. <laughs> Please, Again, somebody help me. I don't followed know I closely by the Toyota Corolla, Vote for the Corolla which is at, which at 5 car. euros, and then the Subaru Impreza with 3.69. So, if you want your favorite car to be in, donate now. Uh, tell you what, why don't, we just, why don't we just go for something odd? Vote for the Mitsubishi Lance, that's got nothing yet. Just vote for that, just keep spamming that. Wouldn't mind driving that, to be fair. It's funny actually, I didn't actually think the bid was for the car would actually get that much notice, but oh my god. I'm pretty happy right now, I'm not gonna lie. What, what about the London Bracer 2 brewing, huh? Right, okay. Halfway there almost. Very nice. So at this point it's looking like I'm gonna be using the focus. Oh, please <sighs> kill Sounded nice. Better than mine. 
Please, please, don't. please, if you're gonna donate, please donate for the Subaru. Please, just don't, don't. For two, for one pound a month, you can stop me being harassed for the Ford Focus. Please, don't be that person. Don't be the, don't be the person. <laughs> don't be the person that votes for Ford Focus. Please, Corolla or Subaru. I've got to focus in the Ford Focus. For the Ford Focus, I don't know. You know, I don't actually know what the... I'm pretty sure the reasoning behind... That's Kenya done, by the way. I'm pretty sure the reasoning behind the Ford Focus is to do, funnily enough, with focusing. I don't know what the backstory is or why Ford thought of that and then just went, Oh, I know, why don't we come up with the Ford Focus? It's like a Fiesta. They must have gone to Spain or Mexico and gone, oh, They're having the Fiesta! Wait a minute, that's a good idea. We can call our next car that. Ford Fiesta! To, like, literally, a month later, introducing the Ford Fiesta. I don't know where they came up with the C-Max, though. Because it's like the C-Max, the S-Max, I think there's one. I don't even know if that exists. Yes, Vauxhall Adam, which is clearly not called Adam. Doesn't even look like an Adam. Opal Adam. Mm. Yeah. That, yes, I am. Oh, right, yeah, so he just put his name backwards and that's how he came up with the car. Clever. Uh, I wonder, it's funnily enough, um, I don't know if a lot of people know this about like some of the manufacturers that are in this game. So, Subaru, funnily enough, actually used to create tanks and things like that, parts for tanks in the, like the 1920s. Something like that. Toyota actually did the same. So yeah, if you think like, oh, Subaru's been around for like a couple of blinks of an eye, it's actually been around since, yeah, a fair bit. Insane. Eh, 127's not too bad. Could have been better that though. Okay, round one done. Where's round two? Oh, I thought McRae got beat then. <gasps> we get to go up against McRae. Yes. Come on, bring it up. Ah, because I'm not that creative. Being just like yeah, this person. <laughs> Is there somebody's put it on the badge? <laughs> Return in his grave if he ever found out. I don't know how he'd do that because he's been dead for 30 years, but. The Opal Adam. Come buy your Opal Adam now. It looks just like that other car made by another manufacturer. That's the funny thing, cars nowadays actually look the same. Actually, some cars are the same as other cars. They just create different. What do you mean? How's that race car is that? Not racist. No, like the Subaru. Oh, what's it called? Oh, sorry, no, hang on. So, yeah, Subaru BRZ and the Toyota GT86. They are, the, they are the exact same car, they're just two different manufacturers. Same chassis, same engine. Somehow one produces more power than the other. I seriously don't get that. The car industry this, this day and age is messed up. It makes no sense sometimes. Also, why, do, why does every car look like a bubble car nowadays? I don't know. At least you're not one of them people driving an Opel Adam. I feel sorry for him. Oh, so. I went on the internet and I found this. It's the Opal Adam. The worst car ever made in the world. And it was named by some stupid Swedish person that had no idea what they were talking about. I don't actually know, but you know. <laughs> Sorry, shall I just turn it to British people then? Would that be better? But you're British, so... 
Oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot we're not easily offended like other countries. Yay! We've got some other country that's actually not offended. Woo! I'm not, no, I'm not going to turn it to you. Everyone spam the chat with something for Paul. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a lot of stick. Damn it, though. Yeah. They all come back. Oh, yeah. Somebody will probably, I doubt anybody would, but it'd be funny if somebody come back with, Yeah, he owes me a cheeky Nando's. I don't know. I seriously still have no idea. Yeah, because they take all your money off you. That's them being cheeky, isn't it? They give you too much ice, that's cheeky. So that's why they're called... It's like if you ask for ice, the, the, the response, you tell the waitress you don't want any ice in your cup, like from the from their cup, sorry, from sorry, from your table to the bar, it's like ice, it wants absolutely no ice, no ice, 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 it wants a load of ice. It just mm. <laughs> just give you too much ice thing. Oh, go for it. I never heard it. Either. I still have no idea how cheeky Nando's are going to play. Oh yeah, um, who's, are we getting ready on time because it'll be coming up shortly. Probably about 40 seconds, if that. Yes, that's correct. Please vote for the Corolla, you've got 20 seconds. Please, please. Corolla, impressive. So. Oh that, yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> just wait, all right, all right. come on, come on. All right, ready on time, whoever it is on time. Is it Ross? All right, ready, Ro ready, Ross. All right, and time. What, what was the time? <laughs> well, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Caught three minutes up, nice. What was my estimate? Really? I thought I put it at 38, but... Eh. Oh, right, fair enough. Yeah, got a, an odd, odd number. Makes sense. What? Who just... You, so much just happened, you just had to resist. Right. <laughs> okay. Right, I, I'm, I'm all done anyway, but yeah. On to the next one, I guess. All right, thank you for the challenge percent run of Colin Cray 2.0. Uh, le let me just say, uh, I just closed the donation incentive for the uh, CMR arcade percent car choice, and right before I clicked save, we got a one euro donation from Lon saying, We gotta have the Corolla, the focus is not acceptable. And, so is the Corolla the winner then? And of course, as I was closing the incentive, the Corolla sniped the lead with yes. six euros over five and a half. Woo! So Thank in you your low. arcade percent run, you will be running with the Toyota Corolla. I prefer a Subaru, but I can't disagree with Corolla, to be honest. So now we will get back to setting up the arcade percent run, and we'll be back with you shortly.